And no. we're back with more of the Pope on film. Yes, Chef. Okay. Okay. <laughs> it's time, Bunny. It is time. Woo! It is, time. it is yes, Bunny, my friend. It is time once again for all of us here on the at the Pope on Film podcast which this October will be celebrating its 10th anniversary and death. It is time once again for us to electric boogaloo our way into the second half of the big shoe. And it is said second half, wherein we finally and eventually get around to discussing our all new low fat, high fiber, long lasting, great tasting, less filling movie of the week. And this week, I was going to pick a low-budget 2024 horror film from The Asylum called Monster Mash, starring Michael Madsen chewing scenery as fucking Dr. Frankenstein. Okay. And I, I, I have it, and all the reviews are the same thing. This is a horrible movie that you will love. And it's like all of the universal monsters that are copyright free join together to defeat the evil Dr. Frankenstein played by uh, Michael Madsen at his, at his drunkest. Oh, but I I know I know it's going to suck like suck and like our our podcast suddenly has an end date, an expiration date. Yes. Suddenly, the Pope on Film has a Best Buy date, and I don't want to spend the six the next six months watching a bunch of shit. The podcast is ending, and so I wanted to pick different things, things that I like, things that that will be fun, that will be different, some good shit, you know. And so this week, the new well, movie you, you, starts. You try. I appreciate that. You, you you try. I fucking like this movie. Okay, okay, we're not there yet. We're not there yet. This week, Anya Taylor-Joy, whom everyone knows, of course, from The New Mutants, she plays a hooker with a heart of gold in the 2022 black comedy The Menu. I was going to ask you, every time I say bunny, for you to yell yes, chef, and every time you said May Lynn, I say bunny way more than you say May Lynn, but I would also say yes, chef. But it seems to me that that like maybe you didn't like this movie as much as I did. <laughs> no. Did you did you you didn't like this as much as I did? It it was pretentious crap about pretentious crap people that I didn't care anything about. There was not one person in this movie that I could give a shit about. And the, and, the... and then to top it all off, you're not even going to kill them off in interesting ways? Turning humans into s'mores isn't an interesting way to kill them? You have to go through the... No, no, first off, no. First off, no, it's fucking stupid. Second, it, it took to the end of the goddamn movie to even do something halfway interesting like that. And, and... Why are these people not leaving? Why are they not ganging up and beating the living fuck out of Ralph Fiennes? See, Rafe. Why are they See? sitting there like goddamn sheep, letting them dress themselves up as s'mores and burn everybody to death. Ooh, spoiler. See, right before the uh, policeman, the, what's the word for the boat police? <laughs> what the fuck are they called? Coast Guard. Coast Guard, thank you. Fuck. Um, I just said, like a huge brain fart. The, the ocean police. When the ocean police show up, right before the ocean policeman shows up to start questioning people, 
Ray Fine says exactly what you're saying. That mm-hmm. like, hey, I'll kill this person if if y'all tell him what's going on. And also, why haven't you tried to get out? Like he okay. he literally says that to him. Like you could have fought back. Why didn't you? Why don't you think about that while this guy comes in? But why why does not this cop notice the guy with the missing fucking finger bleeding out at the table in front of him? Well, besides that, because he wasn't a like cop, it wasn't even a good fucking acting job. Because he wasn't the ocean police, bunny. He was not an ocean policeman. That's my new word. I'm not using Coast Guard anymore. Ocean cops. That's but, it. But, ocean but cops shouldn't that and have electricity been, biscuits. Shouldn't that have been some part of the little performance? I mean, he totally just does not notice the guy bleeding out there. Yeah, that's I mean, probably he would have known that the guy was bleeding out because it was part of the menu. I can't believe you had a problem with this. When I first saw this movie in the theaters, first off, I wasn't going to see this movie in theaters because of some things that Rafe finds set Rafe. Some things that Rafe said in the media around that time that we'll get to in a little bit. But when I went to see it, I had a different feeling. And my feeling was, okay, so all of these people are rich. And this rich cook is going to try and kill all these people. That's a win-win. Because I do hate everyone here. I hate all of these people. I hate each and every character. And they all deserve it because they're all rich. Because feed, uh, eat the rich. There's only one thing that they are good for. Eat the rich. And so I I felt bad when I saw okay. this movie. Okay, I felt, okay. I felt really bad because I was reasons... rooting for the book. But some of the reasons were so fucking petty. Like, John Leguizamo was in a movie he didn't like. Okay. Hear me out. Hear me out. Okay? I was prepared for this. First off, I have had a crush on John Leguizamo since he starred as a drag queen in Two Wong Fu, Thanks for Everything, Julie Newmar. I, I thought that I was a straight cishet guy. And then I saw Tu Wong Fu, Thanks for Everything, Julie Newmar, and I became, like, intensely attracted to John Leguizamo as a woman. And somehow I didn't know I was trans, but that's beside the point. Oh, and then after that, he did uh, Shakespeare, the weirdest fucking Shakespeare you've ever seen. Like, hipster 90s Shakespeare. Remember Romeo plus Juliet? That was fucking I, I weird. I like Romeo plus. I like Romeo and Juliet. I'm not saying I'm not saying that it's bad. I like it too. It's just the most '90s fucking, the most '90s fucking Shakespearean uh, version of a uh, it, the most '90s <laughs> movie you could ever think of. It's fucking amazing, and I love it. So, um, fun fact: in 1996. Uh, John Leguizamo did a movie with Steven Seagal. He hated it, and he, in the press, called Steven Seagal, quote, a horrible human. I thought the same way you did, Bunny. I'm like, okay, like, the critic, they deserve it. The uh, asshole rich boys, they deserve it. Um, the guy who's well, married even, to even uh, they barely fucking deserve it. Give me a little more backstory here. <clears throat> yeah, but here's the thing. Here's the thing. I thought, oh, why is he killing John Leguizamo? Because he doesn't like a movie. John Leguizamo based this character on Steven Seagal. So does your idea of him not deserving to die change when you realize he's trying to be Steven fucking Seagal? Steven Seagal. No, because all these characters are still two-dimensional. You're not giving me anything to care about, you know, for why you're killing them or anything else. If if you gave me a million dollars not to pull the plug on John Leguizamo, 
and I would apologize to my wife for not bringing home a million dollars. Simple as that. I think my my opinions on John Leguizamo's character dying in this film changed once I realized <laughs> that he is doing a Steven Seagal. They mention his actor name once when they're first going onto the island, but if you pay attention to the credits, he is his character is named Movie Star. He is yeah. literally being fucking Steven Seagal, who does deserve to be turned into a small. But again, that's that's where all these characters are two dimensional. How how much do you know about any of these characters except the very superficial kinds of things? Well, first off. First off, uh, I, I, I do want to talk about one thing. Um, when discussing this 2022 black comedy, The Menu, we, of course, have to focus on the star, the woman who steals the show, a legendary actress whom we all know, who shows up in this and just takes the movie by storm. And I am, of course, talking about the one, the only, Judith, Judith fucking Light from Who's the Boss? I was very happy to see Judith Light. Fucking I was very happy to Angela. see Judith Light. I was also very happy to see Judith Light aging naturally. Yes. I, so I've learned so much about this woman because I was so psyched to see her again. She's 65 years old. She's been happily married to the same person since 1985, which in Hollywood is freaking shocking. She was a regular, she was a reoccurring character on Law & Order SVU. She was uh, in the dramedy Transparent, which I haven't seen. And I probably should, because it's about a dad of a family turning into a mom of the family. But I haven't seen it because the guy who won awards being the trans mom in the show Transparent uh, oh, oh. was eventually fired for like a bunch of sexual misconduct allegations, so I haven't watched it. Are but, uh, about... okay. No, 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 no. What's the one with... Uh... <sighs> We're old. Bluth, We're the old. Bluth guy from uh, Arrested Development, the father. That's it. That yes, is it? That's, yes, that's him. He's in the show Transparent as a uh, dad who transitions late in life and becomes a woman, and the entire show is about the family dealing with that. I haven't seen it as a trans woman because uh, the dad of the Bluth family had all these sexual assault allegations, and now I really don't want to see it. And also, like, I, I am totally a transparent... I am a transparent. I already am living through this, so I don't know if I need to see a a, a show about it. You know? But, okay. So, fuck, what was I saying? Okay, yes. So she was in, she was in the dramedy Transparent. She was nominated for Emmys for her work in uh, the in a season of American Crime Story? I never saw any of those. She no. got a star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame in 2019. She's Jewish? Didn't know that. And she has been a fierce LGBTQ and AIDS activist since the early 80s. Really? But of nice. course, Judith Light's biggest accomplishment is making all American Guido dumbass Tony Danza look talented. Yes. Kudos to you, Judith Light. Fucking Tony Danza, who in Taxi played the character of Tony, and in Who's the Boss played the character of Tony. Why? Because he's too he's too stupid to know that he's playing someone else. Yes. There you go. I got really excited. I marked out, to use a wrestling term, I marked out when I saw that Judith Light was in this movie. 
It's the same way I felt when I was watching She-Hulk and fucking Mark Lynn Baker from Perfect Strangers showed up. Yeah. And I was like, good on you, sir. Jesus Christ. Is uh, Tom Hanks... It, I, I'm waiting for Tom Hanks' co-star from Bosom Buddies to show up somewhere. And and she she had aged enough where I wasn't sure. And I <laughs> had to look yeah. her up. I was like, Holy fuck, is that Judith White? Yeah, fucking amazing. Oh, and also that Mad About You guy was in Stranger Things. And Paul Reiser? my kids are watching it, and I'm like, y'all have no idea who this man is, but the fact that he's back on a TV show is a big-ass deal. What was his name? Paul Reiser? Paul Reiser, that's his fucking name. Yeah. But yeah, uh, John Leguizamo plays um, fucking Steven Seagal in this. It, you know what this movie reminded me of? It reminded me of a different... It re, it's like this movie is Ready or Not's cousin. Yeah. You remember Ready or Not? The, yeah. the gory hide-and-seek horror comedy starring Margot Robbie's cheap Australian equivalent? Yes. Fucking I, like, like that feels related to this. Bunny, would you like to hit us with the plot? Oh, so this is why I brought up Judith Light. Okay, so when like Judith Light first talks, first has like any meaningful dialogue, she is saying, "Hey, that woman over there doesn't she look like blank?" And the 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 husband gets all offensive, uh, defensive. No, she doesn't. Stop that. You're being silly. Stop it. She is, Judith Light is saying, hey, doesn't that woman over there look like our daughter? And later, when Rafe Fine says, hey, chick from the New Mutants, I know you're a sex worker. How do you know that other guy? And sh she mentions why, how she knows him and why she's creeped out by him. I think that he absolutely deserves to die for what I believe the script is trying to imply that guy did to his daughter. And Judith Light is so fucked up having realized this that she's like, yeah, okay. Yep. Burn us all down. Yeah. The part that really freaked me out was that by the time you get to the end and the s'mores, a good portion of the people are into it. Like, John Leguizamo does it like a quiet little, yes, chef. And Judith Light's like, yes, yeah. yes, fucking burn us all down. Even the uh, the asshole critic lady, while the guys are running off, is just like, who wants some wine? Fuck it. You know? And they're all just like, yep, this is happening. Wrap it up. I want a fucking burger so bad, buddy. <laughs> Cheeseburger. This is all, this entire movie is just a ploy, a psyop by Big Burger to get us to buy more hamburgers. Yeah. It, the the burger elite made this movie in order to trick us. Okay, so, buddy, would you like to hit us with the plot of this week's film? Oh, I drink a cherry Coke. Uh, 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 a, a, a collection of pretentious fucks show up on an isolated island restaurant with this world-renowned chef uh, and he's a psychopath and they're all kind of psychopaths and uh, nobody acts normally uh, and he uh, Yeah, but not really not until the end. He, he fucked up he 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 dabbled in killing and menace is the best I yeah. can really give him. Why is his mom there though? I was a bit that's the one thing that I'm confused about. Is that okay, I've invited you all here and I'm going to kill all of you. Here's my mom. I'm like, but why I'm 
I've seen this movie, what, three or four times? I'm still confused. Like, why is his mom included? Yeah. I have no idea. No freaking idea. Well, why did he have a weird fucking cult working for him? You know, well, I, why, that part, why a lot of things with this movie? I, I like the fact that he's got like a, like a, a chef cult because I always thought that it was weird that like, oh, hey, look at this businessman. He yells at his employees. That is bad. He treats them bad. You shouldn't do that. Hey, look at this person. This person is treating, uh, his employees like they're just mindless drones and not individuals that is bad hey look at this chef yelling at the people who work for him that's great i want his food and it's like why there's like this american fetish fetishization going on about asshole cooks asshole chefs i can name a couple of different asshole chefs and they are beloved in american society and and we have this like fetishization with that sort of thing like uh do you ever see that show the bear like no. i've never seen it and you haven't seen it but you know who has seen it a good portion of america like yes chef has entered the cultural lexicon as something you can say and like i just don't understand that that it, the way that these chefs treat their employees is horrible, like a cult, but we're okay with it being chefs. If it's any other profession, then the way that chefs treat their employees would be horrible, but they're chefs, so it's okay. I'm a bit confused by that. I've always been confused by that. Why do we like this famous celebrity chef? Oh, because he yells at people? I don't know if that's great. So when I see, like, this is a chef, and he has basically all the people who work for him are a cult who are happy to die for him. Okay, yeah, I can see that. Especially here in America. That's not a reaching concept for me. You know? Yeah, but again, there's the, there's absolutely no more depth to it than like, oh, everybody who works here is really kind of culty. You know? I mean, like, give me a story. What are you trying to tell me here? Oh, you know, oh. again, that's my biggest complaint. Everything is just very very surface and doesn't have much depth okay i i can i think it's fine they're not made for other people you know what some movies are made for like certain audience there you go and so well, i'm not there denying you that i'm right. not denying her right to like it oh yeah Wow, why are you denying my right to like it, buddy? I didn't, I didn't like it. I yeah. feel very, it's, I feel it's very superficial. And wow, Bunny Williams silencing trans women. <laughs> Not cool, Bunny. I didn't Not like cool. It God, silencing me and my right to like a movie. How dare you? Oh, <laughs> so the chef's Asian second in command. Hmm. Uh, basically, yeah. Rafe finds Bob the Goo. So, so um, there was a very uh, Doctor Evil dynamic going on there. Yes, but um, she was the love interest in the movie Downsizing, which is a good movie, but also really disappointed me. Yeah, expected it to be way funnier, but it's not that funny. <laughs> it's a pretty sad fucking movie. And I felt the same way pretty much with Late Night with the Devil. How fucking dare you? That was very that's supposed to be our movie next week. How is it? dare you, sir? Okay, I'm, you know what? You didn't like the menu? You feel the same way about Late Night with the Devil? Fucking, I'm glad this podcast is ending. 
says, how fucking dare you, sir? Good sir. We're still doing Late Night with the Devil next week. So whatever I, whatever uh, opinions you have, you save them for next episode, mister. I, I, I am glad this podcasting is ending is too, because when we started, you had taste. How dare you? How dare you? I, I, I know I'm what this sorry is. I know what that this podcast has caused this much damage to you. I know what you're doing here. You're Harry and the Hendersinging me. That's what you're doing. Hey, Maylin, I didn't like this movie. In fact, get out of here. You go on back home. We don't want you. You hear me? Get out of here. I know that you actually like this movie and you like uh, Late Night with the Devil. And that you're just pretending like you don't like them so that I will get upset and be happy that the podcast is ending. It's sweet of you to do this. And if you want to continue doing this, uh, that's fine. That's fine. I, I get it. It's very sweet, but... But yeah, downsizing, remember the uh, uh, Matt Damon's love interest had the worst fucking accent in the world? Yeah. Yeah. Seeing her in this with a perfect, beautiful American accent makes me think back to downsizing and go, wow, that was some racist shit they made her do. Because that's not a her accent, but they yeah. made her have that accent. Yeah. And it's like, oh, well, fuck the movie downsizing. That's really I offensive. Oh. I did find a rare picture of Anya Taylor Joy. That might take a second to come up. Okay. I like the one thing I like about this because I have seen this movie three or four times is the fact that the dialogue in like the first half hour of this film takes a completely different tone when you finally realize what Anya Taylor Joy's job is. Yeah. That the first half hour that they're talking is just completely different when you find out what she does. Oh, wow. Look at that. Anya Taylor Joy is such a beauty. Uh huh. Really gorgeous. Without wow. a doubt, alien human hybrid. Yeah. Yeah. But she was really good in the New Mutants. I liked her. Yeah. No, that, no, 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 no. She could still act wonderfully, but you know, if we, alien if we do hybrid, the, I mean, if we do the summer of Taylor Swift, I might pick the New Mutants. That was a fun episode. That was a fun movie. It wasn't as bad as I thought. Okay, so, uh, I like the fact that everyone who died deserved it, except maybe not Judith Light, America's princess. Here are some negatives. Um. I hate the romanticization of abusive chefs. <coughs> um, I hate when a director adds the tiniest little detail that no one would ever pay attention to um, as a sort of ostentatious Easter egg. So, nine minutes into this, you see two goats on the side of a road for like a few seconds. Oh, apparently, those two goats are a breed of goats called Judas goats, who are used to lure animals to their slaughter, which is a nod to how all of these people are being led to their deaths, and yada, yada, yada. That's some artsy shit. Okay. So, you, so probably... you, have, you, have, you have just now added a nice fresh shovel full of pretentious bullshit to dump to dump on top of uh, on top of this. I, we need a cherry we need a cherry 10 minute warning i like this movie because it's a bunch of a-holes who get what they deserve because fuck the rich s'mores they get s'mores they get s'mored to death What? Yeah. Yeah. Wait, what? I've I've never actually had a s'more. 
wow, so not only are you silencing trans women, but you hate America. <laughs> Jeez, we are learning so much. We've been on the air for almost a decade, and yet we are learning so much still. I'm, I'm, I'm pretty sure that was known since episode three. <laughs> <laughs> but I was not going to watch this movie because in 2021, about 19 months before this movie came out, um, Rafe Fiennes offered his support to fucking J.K. Rowling? Yeah. Yeah, he oh, said... Oh, that sounds vaguely familiar. He said... Uh, something. I don't know. I didn't save it. But he, like, he he gave his support to J.K. Rowling, and it's like, okay, there you go. I fucking hate Rafe Fiennes, and I'm going to try and avoid everything that he's been in. But then when I saw reviews coming in of the menu, I, I learned a bit more of the plot. And I'm like, oh, so he's an asshole who's killing people. Oh, well, that makes sense that he's a J.K. Rowling supporter. I will go see this. And it's like, oh, wow, look at that. Wait a second. So you're telling me that uh, Ray Fiennes, a man who cheated on his first wife, got divorced and then had sex with a flight attendant in the in a plane's bathroom, which led to that flight attendant getting fired? That divorced celebrity is suddenly a far-right a-hole? Holler me in no way shocked. Yeah. But I like this film. It's fun. I like films with a powerful last girl standing, like Midsommar, the Texas Chainsaw Massacre, Ter uh, Terrifier 2, and The Oogie Loves and the Big Balloon Adventure. And also, I would kill for that fucking hamburger. Yes. I would fucking kill for that hamburger. Leave it to Voldemort. Debonair Toast is right in the chat. Leave it to Voldemort. But I like this movie. Funny had different opinions, or maybe he's just pretending to have different opinions to soften the blow of the podcast ending. Who's to say? We were going to do Late Night with the Devil next, but I don't even know if I want to do it now, because Bunny's got a tood. <laughs> So, uh... No, I'm more than happy to tell you everything I hate about that movie, too. Fucking... Okay. Okay. And that I... one really disappointed me, because I was, I was really looking forward to it. No! No, we're not doing it! Fuck you! We're doing... Fuck, if we do The Summer of Taylor Swift, I'm picking The Gentleman again. Okay. That was fucking... Fun. Um, we are going to be doing a movie that hasn't come out in America yet. We are doing the animated film Robot Dreams. Okay. It's an animated film about a dog uh, in a world where, like, there are no humans, only animals, and they live and whatever. Uh, a dog is lonely and gets a robot as a friend and their best friends and that's the movie there is no dialogue at all which is why it hasn't come out in america but it's come out in like this foreign country and this foreign country and this foreign country and this foreign country so long ago that it's already come out in dvd and i've got a copy of a dvd and so this movie isn't coming out in theaters in America until this summer. But I have it, and we're going to discuss it. So technically, we will be watching a movie that hasn't come out yet. Big deal for the podcast. Yeah. Big ass deal. A Bunny 2 is becoming a timeless classic. Thank you, Debonair Toast. <laughs> bunny 2. Dude, if we were still staying... In business, we could sell shirts that say Rayma Land Horse Erotica and then Bunny Tood. We would sell it. It would be a huge yeah. money grabbing hit. So, no, we're not doing Late Night with the Devil anymore because I love that movie and I don't want you to shit on it. <laughs> we're doing the upcoming animated movie, Robot Dreams. We're watching a movie that hasn't even come out yet okay. because we are amazing. And I don't want you sullying. Late Night with the Devil for me. I love that movie. Except for, like, that fake psychic guy. It 
did uh, the fake psychic guy who spits out the black stuff, and then the guy who's like a skeptic. I don't like either of those people. Yeah. Uh, fuck those people. Oh, well, the worms. I, I, I oh, actually found that. those them pretty interesting with what they were trying to do. I think we could have used a couple of more guests. Yes. You know, a a, a musical Alice Cooper type guest mm-hmm. would have gone nicely. Uh, but yeah, no. Love that movie. How yeah, dare no. you? Love that movie. That's okay. Um. So next week, I, we're I doing love that guy. He's an awesome fucking I actor. Me too. He is an this absolutely is phenomenal of... actor. I used to quote Ant Man all the time. His line: "This is the work of gypsies," and I used to say that. All the time, but now my wife says that gypsy is an offensive term. Yes, I thought is. pikey was an offensive term, but apparently gypsy is an offensive word too. So now I'm trying not to say that. And it's very difficult for me because that's my favorite fucking line of dialogue. Yeah. But that's next week. We're doing robot dreams next week. But now that I'm looking back at this week, Judith Light, America's uh America's princess. Um, Michael Madsen, Tim Curry, Electricity Biscuits? Yes. That's crazy. I gotta say, I think this has been a pretty good episode of the podcast. This has been a damn good episode of the podcast. Good. You know, I felt the same way, but I didn't want to step on your toes. I feel that this is your job and not mine. But anyway. I concur with your assessment, good sir. So until next week, I am Bunny Williams. And I am Reverend Maylin. And on behalf of uh, my wife, Tasha, my youngest, Eleanor, and everybody else in in my massive clan, I just want to say... What do I say? I know the godless heathens part. I just want to say good night. Is that what I say? No. Thank you. What do I say? See you next week, you godless heathen. No, but I just want to say blank. And we will see you next week. I know that. And we will see you next week. But on behalf of blank, I just want to say. Thanks for listening. Jesus. Okay. okay. Fuck, we're getting old. Uh, I just want to say thanks for listening, and we will see you next week, you godless heathens. And you And you, something Maxwell would say. And you, something Eleanor would say. Do 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 do. I'm surprised no one is rushing over here. To get their moment in the spotlight. That is surprising to me. Usually my kids run in. Yeah. To try and say something at the end of the podcast. But hey. You know the podcast is about to end. About to be ending. So I, you know it's a whole new world. A whole new world. Don't you dare close your eyes. Do 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 do. Do 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 do. And that's a wrap. Cut and print.